Hello Sense Business YouTubers, today we will be covering 4.2 Cost, Scales of Production and Break Even Analysis. So join me in this lesson and I will make sure that you get the highest possible grades in your IGCC business subject. Okay, today's lesson's outcome is that we will identify and classify, classify costs. We will talk about economics and diseconomies of scale. We will discuss and understand break even and we will go into safety margins and understand the limitations and advantages of break even analysis. Great stuff. I've made this lesson very cheerful and I'm going to make it very fun so that you don't get bored. Okay, great stuff. First, we are going to identify and classify costs. So we have fixed costs, we have variable costs, we have total costs and we have average costs per unit. You need to remember this for your exam. The most important cost of all to understand is fixed cost, which we are going to talk about in just a minute. There we are. Okay, so a fixed cost is an expense or cost that does not change. Remember, it does not change with an increase or decrease in the number of goods or services produced or sold. So fixed costs are expenses that have to be paid by a company independent of any business activity. So it doesn't matter if your business is making a hundred and thousands of products or it's making zero products, you still need to pay fixed cost. So you might be thinking, since business, what is fixed cost? Aha, uh -huh. good question. So the Fixed costs are insurance. So insurance is a monthly fee. You'll have to pay that regardless of how much your business is making. So this could be monthly or yearly. Interest expenses. So if you get a loan from a bank, you'll have to pay the interest regardless of if you're making money or if you're not making money, you'll need to pay the interest on the loan that you have borrowed from a bank or a cooperation or a local building society. So property tax, this is a tax charged to a business by local government which is based on the cost of assets. So this is always the same. So it doesn't matter if you're making thousands of products or if you're making no products at all, you still have to pay your property tax. This is the same with the rent. Rent, you have to pay that. It doesn't matter how much things you do or, or you don't do anything or if you're on holiday, anything. You still, your business needs to pay rent. Salary is another fixed cost that you will need to pay to your staff. Remember that salary and wages are different. So wages can you can have people that are zero hour contract so they can be variable costs so they can change but salary cannot because salary is paid annually. So it could be 10,000 a year so you will be paying about 800 a month so this is a fixed cost. So then we have utility bills like gas, electricity and so forth. This is also a fixed cost. It doesn't matter how much you do, you still need to pay your gas, electricity bills and so on. So fixed costs remain the same regardless of itself. So these are the costs that stays the same. Doesn't matter how much or how many products your pro business makes. So now this brings us to variable costs. So what are variable costs? Variable costs, good question, is costs that change. So a cost that is corporate expense that changes in proportion with the production output. So variable cost increases or decreases depending on company's production volume. 
So they rise as production increases and they fall as production decreases. So if there's more things that you're selling, the variable costs are going to go boom, sky high. But if you have little or no sales at all, the variable costs are going to come down. So you might be asking, what are variable costs? Variable costs are the direct materials. So these are your raw materials that go into the product. So if you are making chairs and table for a business, and if you have a business that makes tables and chairs, then your direct materials or raw materials would be wood. So how much wood you, you would use depends on how many table and chairs you sell. So production supply is another variable cost. Things like machinery oil consumed based on the amount of machinery used. So these costs of vary with production volume. Packaging costs, for example. The more you package, the more costs. Shipping costs, the more products you ship, the more cost. So that is variable cost. So variable costs change based on your sales activity. Now you might be thinking what's total cost? So total cost is f fixed cost and variable costs are combined so joined together to get your final total cost. So we have a formula fixed cost plus variable cost will give us our total cost. So average cost per product is Production cost per unit of output computed by dividing the total of fixed cost and variable cost by the number of total units produced. So that's total output. Lower average costs are a potent competitive advantage, also called unit cost. So average cost per unit is total cost divided by the number of products produced. So then there's two other types of costs that I want to talk with you just so that you know them. They are direct and indirect costs. So direct costs can be defined as costs which can be accurately traced to a cost object with little effort. So cost object might be a product, a department, a project it can be anything and indirect costs are costs that cannot be attributed to specific task a specific cost sorry cost objects are called indirect costs so example would be an example of direct and indirect costs of a factory on production of identical chairs and tables their direct costs would be labor wages labor wages, wood, handles and lock and their indirect costs would be power consumptions, varnish, glue, paint. So this is what the difference between direct and indirect costs are. Okay great that was the first part of our lesson now we enter the second part. Explain, interpret, and use a simple break-even chart. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm covering 4.2.3 first, and then I'm going to cover 4.2.2 next after this, because I think this is more important and that you need to understand this first. Okay, so what is break-even? The break-even point is reached when the total revenue exactly matches total costs and the business is not making a profit or loss. In other words, it is a way of finding out the minimum level of sales needed for a firm to pay for its total cost. So the line, the perfect line where you're not making any profit and where you're not making any sales. So sell enough products to cover your cost. So to know break even, we need to know our fixed costs and variable costs. Good stuff. So here's a formula that we're going to use 
to understand our break even. So break even is fixed cost divided by contribute contribution per unit cost. So you might be thinking, what is contribution per unit cost? So contribution per unit cost is how much it costs us to make the product. Take away the selling price is contribution price per unit. So if the selling price is £20 and it costs us £4 to make it, that's a variable cost, then our contribution per unit will be £16 we'll be making from one product. So that is our contribution per unit. So selling price take away variable cost per unit is contribution per unit. So here's an example so if a business okay so if a business has products if a business sorry if a business has a product that they are selling for 20 pound and it cost them four pound to make that product their fixed costs are 2000 so how many products would they have to sell before they start making profit so here is what we need to do so we do selling price £20, variable cost £4, so we go selling price minus variable cost equals 4, which is £16. So the selling price £20, take away the variable cost £4 is £16. So now, as we said here, so our fixed cost is Fixed cost is 2000 divided by 16 pounds contribution per unit equals 125 units. So this business will have to sell 125 units before they start to make a profit. And that will be their break even point 125 units. So what are the ups and downs of break even? So the ups are issues how long it will take before a startup business reaches profitability and measures profit and loss at different levels of production and sell. It predicts the effect of change in sell prices, analyzes the relation between fixed and variable costs, it predicts the effect of cost and efficiency changes on profitability. The downsides are it assumes that the sell price are constantly at all levels of output. It assumes production and sales are same. Break even chart may be time consuming to prepare. It can only apply to a single or single mix of products, so you cannot have different products on the same break even chart so the chart is merely a forecast for the future there are no guarantee that the figures will prove to be correct so most businesses sell more than one product so break even for the business becomes harder to calculate so break even analysis should be seen as a planning aid rather than a decision making tool so you need to remember that good stuff so now let's understand margin of safety so margin of safety is a financial ratio that measures the amount of sales that exceeds the break-even point in other words this is the revenue earned after the company or department pays all, all of its fixed and variable costs associated with producing goods or services you can think of it like the amount of sales a company can afford to lose before it stops being profitable Okay, so a margin of safety is the difference between actual output units and break-even units. So a business operating with positive margin of safety is profitable. A negative margin of safety means the business is making losses. So example here is a negative margin of safety so if a business has a break-even point of 1000 but their actual output is 950 their margin of safety is negative 5 this is bad and the business is not making any profit 
However, if a breaking point for a business is break even point for a business is 1000 and their actual output is 1200 their margin of safety is 200 this is a positive margin of safety and this is good so the formula we use is actual output take away break even this equals margin of safety and to get the profit we do margin of safety units so this times contribution cost per unit we talked about contribution cost per unit a bit earlier and that will give us the profit good stuff like i said we'll talk about 4.2.2 next so that now we're going to talk about economies and diseconomies of scale so economies of scale are factors that lead to a reduction in average cost as a business increases in size. This economies of scale is as a business becomes too large, it becomes less efficient, leading to higher cost of production. So the five economies of scales are purchasing economies. So larger firms are able to negotiate cheaper prices for raw materials. For example, Coca-Cola buying large bulks of sugar from suppliers at a cheaper price than if it was for a small company to go buy the same amount of sugar. Financial economies. So large firms are able to negotiate cheaper financial finance deals. So lower bank loans because banks view large businesses as less risky and more trustworthy. Managerial economies. So large businesses can afford to hire specialists to work for them. This increases in efficiency because they have that money to spend. So technolo technical economies. So use of specialist machinery to produce large quantities of products. So small businesses can afford to do that and therefore it's n they, st they will not have the option to join this marketing economy so buying on vehicle to distribute products to advertising cost can be spread over a large number of products so this economies of scale are poor communication so difficult to send and receive accurate messages and large organization takes longer for decision to be made top managers loses contact with Customers, so low motivations, workers begin to feel unimportant and not valued by management. This leads to lower efficiency, so low moral. But what you do need to understand is that businesses should divide themselves into small units that can control, so they can control themselves and communicate more efficiently to avoid any this economy is from arising. Well done for joining me this entire time in this video and now it's question time. So if you have any questions, please make sure that you write them down in the comment section below so I can help you answer them. To watch next video, click somewhere here. It should be here and I've got an iPhone to give away so make sure that you comment on this video or the last three previous videos for a chance to win an iPhone. It's a completely free iPhone. All you have to do is click subscribe and just comment. Comment a question or what did you like about the video and I'll make sure that you are selected for that free iPhone. Thank you very much for watching. Please continue watching and I'll see you on the next video. Take care for now. Bye.